Welcome to a new episode of Back to Basics. Today I want to talk about four different objects. Each object has a different functionality, but they all deal with uh, the way we can we can manipulate lists in Bach. The first object is actually a simple utility. Uh, it's called Bach Portal and allows me to translate Bach messages in a format that is readable by Max. The second object is Bach Group which allows me to create uh, inner structures within a list. The third object is Bach Trans. It's a matrix transposition of a list. And the last one I want to talk about is Bach Pick, which allows me to parse a list and pick different elements um, in different ways. The first object I want to talk about today is Bach Portal. Um, Bach Portal, it's an object that does not do anything to its incoming message. By default, Bach messages output two symbols, a Bach.lllll and then a number. The number is irrelevant for us. The LLLL, it's an acronym to indicate Lisp-like linked lists. The Bach portal allows us to translate the Bach message into a max readable message. In order to output a max readable message, I need to give the Bach portal an output out T or out M. T for text or M for max. And they both work for max. Uh, there is a slight difference that is, at this point, not very important to point out. The back portal allows me to uh, have multiple outputs and in that case the out um, attribute can be of different letters. It's important to notice that there is no space in between and now you can see how the um, rightmost outlet is a max format with an M while the leftmost is N for native, native back message. The second object I want to talk about today is the group. The back group object allows me to wrap elements within a list. The amount of items wrapped are defined by the back group argument. So in this case, I have a list of nine numbers and I, if I give a group three argument, then I will have lists subdivided into three sublists, each of three elements. So this gives me the chance to talk about a little bit about the back trans object. We can think of this list also as matrices. So matrices have columns and rows. And if I think of the incoming list as three rows, then if I do a matrix transposition of that, I will have uh, the columns becoming rows and the rows becoming columns. So let's visualize that to make it a little clearer. So now I have uh, three rows. The first row is one, two, three, and the second one is four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. If I do, if I get the output for the matrix transposition, uh, I get the column has become now a row, a row of a columns. So this is an object that I wanted to talk about pretty early on because it can be very powerful and a fast way to manipulate lists as we will see in the future. The third object I want to talk about today is the Bach Pick object. The Bach Pick object uh, is similar to the Max Unjoin object. I can pick each element. The first element will be the element wrapped into a first set of parentheses. It's important to remember, and I will repeat this in the future, 
because it's a source of constant bugs, at least as far as I'm concerned, that you have to remember that back objects index items in a list starting from one, are one based indexed list. So the first element will be element number one and not element number zero, like uh, for instance, in the ZL lookup object where the first element of the a stored list as index zero. The bug pick can go deeper than that. In fact, I can pick elements within the sublist. For instance, from the first list, pick the second item. From the second list, pick the third item. And for the third list, pick the fourth item. Except that there is no fourth item in the third list, so it will not return any value for the for the third print object. And in this case, if I correct, now the third element of the third list is 9. Like every other max object, it outputs things from starting from the right to the left. So the back print C will be the first one to be output. In this case, the first sublist has a nested list within it, and I can pick uh, for instance, the second item from the second sublist of the first list, and it will return an A. If I only pick the uh, second item from the first list, I will have just I will have both elements of the sublist picked. So I hope this was informative, and please let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or of to about topics that you want me to discuss. Uh, if there are any fuzzy points in these tutorials, also I will try to answer as best as I can in the comments. I want to thank my patrons that have been supporting my work. Uh, feel free to check out my Patreon page. And um, until the next time, take care.